Good morning everybody we are back for another video and as you can see we are here at a very empty Clewiston boat ramp we are the literally the only truck and trailer at the launch and that's probably because it says it's going to be a hundred and one today not feels like a hundred and one not with the heat index and all that it's going to be 101 degrees by 11 o'clock we've got some like saharan dust storm or something that's coming through it was coming through here yesterday it was just like a really hazy almost like a foggy day and the heat was just disgusting and um it's supposed to be like that today too but i gotta get on this lake and find some fish i mean i i'll be honest with you guys i have never struggled this much to find fish on this lake in my life um not for this long. You know, we've all had those crazy bad days or I've had a crazy two or three days where it's extremely tough. But we're going on like two weeks of just not having any idea of what's going on. I kind of have an idea of what's going on, but um, you know, that doesn't help my clients catch fish. I really think a lot of these fish are feeding at night. I think a lot of them are just out in the main lake swimming around, but I gotta find a group of fish up shallow that are feeding and find some better areas, so. We're here in Clewiston. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna start on some shad fish this morning. And then we're gonna pick the flipping rods up and just try to cover a lot of water and see what happens. So, I don't know, I gotta get in the boat and I gotta rig a couple of things. And then we're gonna go get after it. So bear with me and we'll see what happens. We just came through the locks and this light bar is much brighter than I thought it was. This little thing's crazy. Uh, but I think it's important to point out, I literally personally have not, have not caught a bass in probably a little over a month. I don't remember the last bass I've caught. I mean, I've, obviously my customers have caught some, but I don't remember the last time I personally caught one. So hopefully we could change that today. Uh, like I said, this, this lake's been in a, people have been catching them. I've been in a funk. I mean, it's, it's definitely tough out here, but I know some people that say they've been catching them. I don't know if it's dock talk or what, but. I don't know, I don't, I don't like that feeling of me personally not having any clue of what's going on out here. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, figure something out and start putting the pieces back to the puzzle. Got a boat coming out behind us. So we're gonna go start at this one area and hopefully we can at least catch a couple, maybe they'll be small. And then the plan is to just, like I said, pick up the flipping rod and go and just try to cover some water. I know where the fish should be. The other problem is the wind has not stopped blowing in weeks. So a lot of these areas where I know there's fish holding, you're not able to fish. One, because of muddy water, and two, it's just too rough, even if the water's clean. So I don't know. I'm gonna scoot on out here to this spot and we'll see what happens. So bear with me.
that one. We'll hook this fill out. Really gold and white fish. You can tell he's been out here for forever. Healthy. First one I've caught in a month. I missed one the cast before, so hopefully there's a little group of them out here. Crazy sunrise back there. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but it is 7.05 in the morning. I've had two bites, caught one, missed one, both on a white swim jig on the outside. I'm gonna try and just do like a little timeline video for you guys today, just keep you guys updated as to what I'm doing, when, so you guys can see what I'm looking for, how I adjust throughout the day, and just see how my day goes. I might not get another bite today, and that's the God's honest truth with how, how it's been. It's supposed to be, like I said, 101. We're like two days from a full moon. It's windy, right? So, I mean, it's already, obviously it's not windy, windy, but you can see there's little foot rollers rolling around. So kind of, it makes fishing the outside edge very difficult, but we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna stop on this point, throw a trap, throw a swim jig, and then I think we're just gonna get the big rod out and go flipping if uh, mother nature lets us. Very tough conditions on a already very tough lake. So we'll see what we can make happen. Let's go try it. I just laid down on the outside edge to start flipping and reached in to grab a plastic and my all of them are completely soaked and sopped and wet. This bag I have them in, I left it open, left the box open, had like three inches of water in it. I had it sitting here, like the box still has water in it. These compartments in this boat are not sealed very well, watertight, but in their defense, I had like three beavers and some craws, all I think prohibiting, prohibiting this thing from sealing very well. And I've been dealing with a lot of rain and washed my boat. I'm worried about the boat wash because that means it's got soap in it and maybe they'll smell it. I don't know. So I literally just dumped it on the deck and just gonna let it marinate for the day and let it dry out because that's a lot of money in plastics. So, yeah. Like I said this morning, this wind has just been brutal. It's been blowing like this for the past two weeks, which is three weeks, actually, which is very uncommon for the summertime. So it's making fishing where the fish are very difficult. I mean, not only is it muddying the water, but you just can't fish out there in two foot rollers. So I'm trying to stay as close to the main lake as I can, but be protected so I'm not fishing unproductive water also. Now, from what I'm told, it's supposed to stop blowing tonight. Like the wind's gonna be complete, there's gonna be no wind for four or five days. So you would think, or I think, the wind should gradually die down throughout the day, which would be nice if I can get out there towards the outside edge a little bit more. But I don't know how long I'm gonna to fish today or be able to stay out here because it's, it's gonna be so damn hot. I mean, it's already, like I said, I don't know. It's gotta be 88 degrees already. So we'll see, but just gonna keep grinding out, just flipping a three quarter ounce jig, June bug color three quarter ounce this is a Fitzgerald Texas jig I've got a gambler ugly otter on the back just try for a big one I mean if I'm not gonna be able to catch a lot hopefully we can catch a big one no bites yet and it's 730 still no bites and I'm going against everything I ever talk about on my charters and in my videos how i don't listen to music i like to have my ears open so that i can listen for fish schooling see if i listen for bluegill things like that i've got my headphones in listening to a podcast um here's the deal it's been such a grind out here lately I literally have to like keep focused and just keep he my head down and grind and not get distracted and not get frustrated. I mean, it's been tough on me guys. Like there's a big part of me that does not even want to be out here. It's not because I'm burnt out on fishing or anything like that. I, it's just been that tough that I have like no confidence in what I'm doing. So 
listening to a podcast, doing fish, fishing the way I want to fish, but <laughs> the chances of me hearing fish blowing up and stuff, I think, are very slim with how tough it's been. So, just gonna put my head down and grind today and see. Just flipping some reeds, like I said, right near the main lake. Still flipping a jig. I'm probably gonna go back and forth between a pair, a bare plastic and a jig, but have a lot of confidence in this area. Um, the water's muddy, but it's fishable. So we're gonna fish up here another 100 and 150 yards or so, and then go for a ride again, I guess. First fish since about 6.30. Picking your phone out so I can hear. Um, it is a grind, like I thought. I thought this fish was gonna be a little bit bigger when I stuck them, but look how fat they are. He reeks of shad. Doesn't even smell like a bass. I mean, they sm you could smell the shad coming off of them. I missed a fish right back here, so I had a bite literally two flips ago. And um, little guy, but it's a bite, and it's funny. I'm out here, kind of, pretty much on the main lake. The wind, I think, is beginning to die down a little bit. For the past, whatever it was, I don't remember when I checked in last two hours. I ran, did some schooling stuff, threw a trap, threw a crankbait a little bit, even checked some stuff in the rim canal. Just wasn't feeling it, so I came back out here. Water is actually perfect where I'm at, and uh, I kind of slid through here last week or a week and a half ago with a guide trip, and we had a few bites, so I decided just to kind of come dissect it a little more. That big shot, and that was two bites and, I mean, two flips. So maybe we're on a little, maybe we found a little group of them. I got. One of my power pull boards went out, so I only got one pole, but stuck it down. I'm gonna flip everything around in front of me here and just move slow. That's what you gotta do. When you get a bite, when it's tough, slow down. Because that's, you know, the first bite I've had in two hours. I'm out here on the main lake. There's a boat trail that goes out here in front of me. Maybe that's Holton Bay. You know, it's something different around. So we're gonna just fish really slow through here. That one was on just a bare plastic, not a jig. Thought it might have been a big one the way you hit it, but hey, it's a bite. We're gonna get back at it. They can't get any fatter. I mean, they're just, they're just spread out all in this area here. Tried flipping a jig, no bites, but it's probably because the fish in here that I've had so far have been smaller. And the grass gets a little bit thick, so just flipping the beaver, or this is the D-bomb, whatever, with a three quarter. I feel like I've been getting some more bites, but we'll see if we run into a big one. It is 9.21. Slow grind, but better than I've been doing.
They're all cookie cutters. Healthy fish. Not what I thought was going to grab that jig. They're all healthy. I don't know how they're all this small. Look at the build of these fish. Look at them. They are tiny, but they don't get any healthier. It's weird. Some of them, I mean hammer it like that one did, a second it goes in the water. And then other ones, I'm hopping it three, four times and it just gets spongy heavy. Ten thirty. I'm getting bit every 10 or 15 minutes, maybe even more than that. I'm missing a lot of fish. All right, let's try this. I've had these in for like two and a half hours now. Can't hear myself talk. getting bit like every 10 minutes and you can see I'm literally just going through a sea of Kissimmee grass there's some round reeds mixed in obviously those are my percentage spots just because there's something different but um, I am <clears throat> I'm not really flipping the jig as much because the cover is a little thicker so this plastic with a three-quarter just falls down in there beaver d-bomb ugly otter just I mean they're all in that bag and I'm just grabbing whichever one I grab first but having fun getting bit just wish I could run across a big one dealing with this dirtier water, flipping it where I want it. Never mind. I 
was gonna say I'm, le I'm flipping it where I want it and kind of letting it marinate in there for a little bit just to make sure they get a look at it that's a better one the tail these fish I feel like have been untouched or something I mean they're they're just fat and healthy no hook marks in them white bellies look at that tail it's kind of neat God, just little footballs but that guy it's funny they're either hitting it as soon as it goes in blink, they're getting it or it's like hop shake 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 hop hop shake 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 don't like you know you got to leave it in there for a little bit but all of these fish reek of shad and i've yet to see a single shad flick and they won't eat a white swim jig i'm not sure what all that means but got a pretty good pile of uh plastics over here ripped used plastics got a bite. I want to show you guys how long this fish will hold on there. He's still on it. He's still on it. Still on it. Still has it. He still has it. Still eating it. Still has it. And look. Not good hooked. Nothing. That's a three quarter ounce weight. That's a three pound fish. That's a bait that is wet, was wet this morning, and probably has boat soap soaked into it. And you saw how long that fish had that bait. For any of you that book me, and um, and the on this reaction beaver, the tails weren't split. So you guys hear me preach it. Let them take the bait. When we're fishing a big easy and they flush the toilet on the bait on top or a frog, you guys always hear me say, be patient, let them take it, let them get the slack out of the line and hit them. And I get a lot of customers that tell me, oh, well, where I fish, you know, they won't, they won't hold on to it that long. And listen, I'm not saying I know everything and that might be the case where you live. But I think more times than not, people are, they don't have the patience um, or the discipline, you know, to let them take it longer. Uh, I'm not telling you to put it in free spool and let them swallow the bait for 30 seconds. But the whole point is everyone, I feel like a lot of people lose a lot of big fish, especially down here in Florida when you're fishing in grass and, and heavy cover like this. You don't let the fish get the bait. All right. So like with a frog, when that frog's popping and you set the hook on sight, you know, it just pictures the frog coming up behind it. You literally pull it out of their mouth. Same thing with a big easy. I've said it before. You're reeling that big easy, and they get it. The more you can let them get that thing in their mouth, the more of a chance you have it that you're going to hook them in the roof of the mouth, and the shank of the hook is going to be in their mouth. So they can go through the grass, the needle grass, the dollar pads, the high drill, all they want, with that mouth open going like this. But that hook shank has nothing to catch on because it's hidden in their mouth. Same thing goes for flipping. You don't want to gut hook them, but if you can let that fish start moving away from you or whatever the case might be, and your whole system is stuck in their mouth and in the throat or in the roof of the mouth, that flipping hook, now you saw, I let that fish eat for I don't know how many seconds it was, but he was still hooked in the lip. You know, so don't worry about gut hooking them. You know, it, when you go, that's the other thing about GoPro footage. When I throw that big easy or that frog and that big fish eats it and I'm like, I just try to be disciplined and start reeling really slow and feel all that slack out of that line. I feel the tension of the fish before I set the hook. You know, sometimes you pull the trigger a little too early because you're like, oh, you know, I, I pulled early because I was letting that fish eat for like six seconds. I was so scared he was going to spit it out. If you go back and watch that six seconds is really a second and a half. It feels so much longer because you're anticipating setting the hook. Uh, same thing goes for flipping. Don't rush. That's why I like a rod that's not a meat stick of a rod. 
you know, it's got some tip to it. So you can load the fish, feel them. He doesn't really feel too much resistance. Reel down, make sure, watch where your line's laying. You know, take time and reel up, make sure your line's not around a reed or whatever, and then swing on them. That was a good fish too. Eleven fifteen. Uh, I don't know how many fish I've caught. Had a lot of bites. A couple three pounders now. But um, you know the old saying, you don't want to leave fish to go find fish. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I kind of want to go look at other stuff, but at the same time, I kind of want to expand on what I've already found. Um, because if the wind dies down, this is going to clean up a little bit more and whatnot. Now, granted. <clears throat> This is not the place to be on the lake right now. This pattern I'm running is going to um, hold true for literally everywhere around the lake. It's just right now, today, while I'm out here with the wind being the way it is, this is one of the only areas that I think I could fish efficiently with it you know, being productive. Now, if this weekend comes and the wind dies down, literally from Clewiston North all the way to Buckhead Ridge, that's going to be where the bigger fish are, I believe. I mean, I've hit a lot of good water here and haven't caught a big one. I have it all to myself. So I, I truly think, um, you know, there's gonna, other areas are going to come into effect here and come into play once this wind dies. But we'll see. I'm actually going to just kind of idle back, eat a sandwich and drink a water, and then just kind of cut in and try to fish maybe a little bit further in. Maybe the bigger fish are in. I don't know. But I don't want to go run around and waste a bunch of gas, so we're just going to kind of bump around here and come do another pass. So what I did, guys, I actually idled back up to where I started, and I started fishing on the back side of the grass line where I started. So I started out here, kind of where I'm at now. You see the, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. The main lake's right here. I started back here, literally never had a bite. And what that does is it kind of just proves my theory that I had with myself that I think these fish are going to be as close as they possibly can to this main lake. Yep. And as I'm talking to you guys, they're schooling. So hold on. We're, uh, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. I was gonna get ready to give you guys a tip when this happened, but I'm gonna give you guys another one. I don't know how many fish are in this school, and you never know. So I'm probably 50 yards from where I saw the fish chasing bait, but I don't want to run right up to them because what'll happen is sometimes the school might have five, six hundred fish in it, and the school might be 60 yards wide. You don't want to run up on the fish. You know, you're gonna run into the chance that you're gonna land on top of them. So I'll run up real close to them. You know, but I'll, I'll stay back up where I can make a long cast in the general area. And the second you get your first bite, you're going to want to pull down. I'm pretty sure it was a bass schooling, or some bass schooling. I'm pretty sure it wasn't mullet jumping or anything. It caught my eye, and I looked up, and there was a couple more blow up, so we're going to try. It could have just been one fish. You never oh, no, 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 no. They're here, boy. Holy crap, guys. Oh, no, they're here. That's why you don't fish with damn headphones. I could have been hearing that the entire time, but I had those headphones. Watch this. Oh my god, guys. They're everywhere. They're blowing up everywhere, but I didn't get bit. Oh, what the hell? Oh my god. What the hell? There's no way it's just one fish.
straightened my that o-ring out that's not good one there's number two instead of throwing the trap we're gonna throw something else so since we're late in the summer we've got a big fray in here i'm sure these fish have been chased after before probably had traps thrown at them so a lot of times i, I find out that throwing a top water into a school you're gonna get your bigger bite bad one how white they are reek of shad big but fun There's like 25 fish under the I knew there were fish feeding on shad somewhere. Look how pretty that fish is. Watch, if I leave it in the water, I guarantee you'll hook too.
see there, you know, it's got both hooks buried in the fish. Good one. One more time, just for those of you that didn't see it. I'm sure all of you by now have seen the little piece that Wired to Fish did with Randall Tharp and Gerald Swindle on slack line hook sets versus a tight line hook set. Um, I use both of those every day out on the water and they both have, you know, their time and place. But there's another one that they didn't really pick up on called the Spartan hook set. Uh, I'm in a scenario right now where it's working very well, so I'm going to show you guys what I mean and how I use it. And that's it it works very nice like when you know i'm fishing with my tournament partner and i don't want to set the hook to the side and risk hitting his rod or hitting him in the head so spartan hook set works really well just in case some of you weren't, didn't really catch that exactly how it worked i'll show it one more time That's it. Oh, the fish. So definitely try that out. Nice fat one there. Um, works very well down here on Lake Okeechobee. All morning that these fish reek of shad. They're going crazy up here in front of the boat. I don't know if you guys can see it. this fish I'm just having fun with them now No size, but this is what I'm talking about, guys. Like, it can be a grind, but when you find them, you find them. I have not seen a single boat all day. I'm just catching good fish. And the whole key to these schoolers when you find them, there's probably hundreds upon hundreds of schools like this all around the lake. You just got to find them and keep your ears open. Um, it's just switching up the baits. You know, this is a white easy swimmer. Just trying all different stuff. I threw a worm in there, caught a few on a worm. Just put air going nuts in this grass. I'm, I'm about to probably leave so my clients tomorrow can catch them. Not that I can catch them all, but I don't need to beat them up that much. That swim jig bite is the deal, man. Just that thunk. It's like a snook thump. God, he choked it too. Again, no big ones, but if you can catch them every cast like this, it's sure fun.
ramp. This is what makes this lake and this sport just so awesome. I mean, you just, you literally never know. You just never know what's gonna happen, how your day's gonna lay out, what you're gonna find, what you're gonna see. I mean, guys, this, I, you guys could probably tell at the beginning of this video, I was so, I really did not wanna come out here. Um, how fat. I didn't wanna come out. I, uh, I had a day off. I wanted to go fishing, but this lake has been kicking my ass so bad guiding and just fun fishing that I wanted to just go play with those tarpon again. But Breezy was like, no, go to the lake. You have to find some fish, you know, because I've been coming home from guide trips. Just so disappointed, so down. I mean, guiding all day for three bites and granted you're you know thankfully i've had great customers that have understood you know it's fishing it's gonna you're gonna have days like that you're not gonna catch them every day but for me when i have two weeks of that and then like i said today after before today i hadn't caught a bass myself in a month and a half um granted like i said i've been doing other types of fishing i've been guiding so i don't really i don't really pick up a rod very often but i had a couple days where i came out fishing myself in zero and uh that happens okay so it happens to me it happens to everybody but you saw i mean I, I came out here to flip was doing my flipping deal because i have confidence in that but this i there are i knew this was happening around the lake this time of year august september beginning of october this might seem really cool but there are hundreds of groups of fish like this around the whole entire lake doing this exact same thing from pelican bay to nubbin slough they're schooling you just gotta find and they're very temperamental i mean you gotta find them when they're biting they got to give themselves away like these did and you just got to stay focused keep your head in it and fish and, and and just be very observant don't fish too fast i find myself doing that a lot and i tell all my customers and try to tell you guys find an area and fish it right i mean you, you, a lot of people just think you know you come in they throw they throw out five times and i'm not getting bit if you find good water good bottom all the ingredients to a good lake okeechobee fishing spot 95% of the time, the fish are there. You just got to figure them out or you got to be there when they're biting. I mean, these fish have slowed down tremendously since I've been here. And granted, I've been cleaning the boat up and just, you know, diddling around because I don't need to catch all of them. And I've probably caught 50 or 60 fish out of it already. But um, if I didn't have, if I hadn't taken those headphones out, which you guys heard me say in the beginning of the video, I'm going to put my headphones in and listen to this podcast because... The chances of me finding them are going to be slim because of, I was just really negative, you know, because it was beating me up. But if I wouldn't have heard that pop, spun around, saw that nervous water in that shed jumping and the white water underneath them, I mean, we would have still been flipping. And yeah, I mean, I might have caught two nine pounders slipping, but I knew there were fish in the area doing this because if you guys could remember, I could, they reek of shad. So I knew there was bait pushing in here. I was throwing a white swim jig in there a lot, didn't get bit, but they're just set up out here for it. Um, crazy crazy and it was funny because i saw the i only saw one fish blowing up but i knew but where, just how this is laid out where these that fish was i was like he ain't gonna be alone and he sure as hell wasn't i, mean, I could probably throw in here again catch another one Not big, but guys, there I, I guarantee you, there are schools of fish just like this somewhere in the lake where these are all five, six, seven pounders. Um, I haven't been able to find it. I'm very grateful that I was even able to find this. But somebody out here has located a school like this that's all fishing. 